everybody welcome back to just shy i am shy the person not the adjective and welcome to my k-pop collection my entire collection flip through it is going to be an undertaking so like you know you know the deal around here don't get a snack get a whole meal stay hydrated <laughs> cuddle up if it's still cold where you are it's it's kind of off and on here but anyway, so, and also don't mind me, this is um, a Cravity Sea Crew doll for a young Tae. His little name is Young T, and that is just the cutest thing. Um, while I did this whole explanational intro thing, I just wanted something to fiddle with, and I just love touching this thing. <laughs> That's such a weird way to say it, but like, it is so soft. It is so cute. It is so soft. I honestly, this is like one of my favorite K-pop merch items that I've ever bought. I don't really buy stuffed animals. I will for ATs when the T's mon come out, like bet your life on it. Like I will get them all. But um, I decided to pick up this one just like randomly because I thought he was really cute with the rose in his mouth. And I genuinely love this little doll so much. <laughs> so just don't mind me fiddling with him you know, while, while we're doing this. So anyway, um, yes, I am going to be flipping through every single one of my binders today. Um, and I also have, um, some collectors tags that I will be going through. So I'll be answering questions about my binders and my collections, my plans, my life, everything <laughs> from the collectors tags. I also put out a little blurb do people still use that word? Is that even a word? Anyway, I put out a little like, ask me anything on my Instagram. And I was like, hey, ask me anything about my collection. And you guys were so sweet as to send me some questions. Um, so I will be answering those as well. But yes, without any further to do, I just love them so much. Okay, without any further to do, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we are going to flip through is my just general boy group binder. <laughs> this is all of my boy groups that I don't collect too, too seriously. If I like a comeback, I will, you know, go ahead and put it in here or like smaller boy groups that I don't have a whole ton for. So they don't really like need their own binder of anything. That being said, this is getting very full. So <laughs> We, we will have to like make some choices in, in this year for sure. But um, yeah, so another thing is a question I got asked a lot when I did my counting how many photo cards I'm storing videos um, was how many photo cards I have like total. And I feel like a lot of K-pop collectors just kind of like gloss over this and they're like, oh, haha, a lot. Or, oh, I don't know, probably like a thousand. We're going to find out exactly. I love that you guys are indulging in my actuary tendencies. I could have been an actuary. I feel like when people say like I could have been something, it's like something cool. Like I could have been a lawyer. Or I could have been an astronaut. And I'm just like sitting here as a tax accountant being like, I could have been an actuary, <laughs> which is just a person who counts basically. Um, but anyway, so we are going to count every single one of my photo cards. Um, if you want to guess, like, please feel free. I probably won't put this one in the title, so it will be a mystery. But like, yeah, if you want to guess, feel free to do that now. Pause. Wipe off your, your Cheeto hands or your Dorito fingies and like, go ahead and put your guess in. But yeah, we're going to count. So just, if you see the running counter up there, that's where we're at. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of flip through things and, um, I may not talk specifically about the collections that I'm flipping through. It does not mean I don't care about them. It just means I have a lot of binders <laughs> and we have a lot to get through. Um, so yeah, first up was my Pentagon collection. I really don't collect Pentagon, but I love Hui so much. And Love or Take was such a beautiful album, like physically. Like I really, really loved that concept. So I collected that and I really haven't collected anything else. But okay, 
So I think I will just get like the easy questions out of the way now. So first one is who is my old bias? <laughs> if you don't know, it's Kim Hong Joon. Like I love that man so much. He is my anything, everything, all things to the moon and back, ride or die. Like that is my K-pop boy. So if you didn't know that, yes, it is Kim Hong Joon. Also, I'm not going to uncount like the bigger inclusion to my photo card haul because they're, they're not, they're not photo cards. I'm only counting like photo cards this side and then like the bigger eight pocket mini photo card size ones. I'm going to count those too, but yeah, not, not stuff like this. Okay. Anyway. So yeah, Kim Hong Joon, <laughs> if you didn't know, um, is my ultimate bias. Yeah, superhuman. But my ults in general are OT880s. I love every single one of them, as well as 10 um, from NCT, specifically Wavy. He has been my bias since the dawn of NCT, since the seventh sense, honestly, which I think was the first song that they had put out. Um, so yeah, since then, 10 has been my bias. And then um, my other ult is Baekhyun from EXO. He really is such like a geriatric toddler. Also, sorry all these pages are blank. I set up for like the new comeback and that, that is what that is there for. Because uh, Kingdom has a new album that I purchased. And <laughs> weird interjection of a story. So I ended up winning a in-person fan call for Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> just let that sit in for a second what had happened was i bought um from make star literally six albums and won an in-person fan sign which of course i couldn't go to because i don't live in korea nor am i gonna catch a flight um so yeah they like it was like the dead of night and i was like oh you know kingdom's album is going to be released and all of a sudden i see um an email pop up on my phone for make star and i'm like why is make star emailing me like did they already ship my albums like wow um and they were like Chika and i was like Chika what <laughs> Chika what <laughs> like uh no ma'am you take it back <laughs> like honestly i was so shocked um and so like the winner's benefits were of course you get to go to the in-person fan sign and like i don't know if you can like hold hands with them. I don't know if they're they're doing that or if they're still not doing that. I don't I don't know. Um, but you got like a signed Polaroid, you got a signed album, and then you won a full set of the Make Star cards. Not to sound ungrateful, <laughs> but I genuinely just wanted the Make Star cards. I was like, if I could just get that full set, y'all could keep the rest because I'm not going to that fan sign. Um, so basically I emailed Make Star and was like, hey, um, I cannot attend due to scheduling conflicts. <laughs> like I didn't know what to tell them. <laughs> I didn't want to say, hey, um, I didn't expect to win this, so I didn't plan to come. Like, I don't know. So I was like, uh, due to scheduling conflicts, I cannot attend this in-person fan sign. Like, do I have to forfeit my winner's benefits? And if they would have told me yes, it would have honestly been fine. But uh, Make Star got back to me and they were so kind. And they were like, oh, well, we have to talk to the coordinator who's, you know, coordinating the in-person event. And they may not have time to sign items and whatever, whatever. But for sure, we'll give you, you know, the full set of Make Star cards. So I was happy with that, honestly. <laughs> um, and I was like, okay, you know, thank you so much for getting back to me and all of that. And uh, they emailed me like a couple of days after the fan sign had passed and they were like, hey, yeah, we talked to the coordinator and they went ahead and signed an album for you. And I was like, okay, cool. So <laughs> that's how that worked out. As of me filming this, it has not arrived to me. Otherwise, I would show you guys. But yeah, so that's what happened. And now I have like too many cards for that makes our fan sign but yeah that's the one and only time i have won a fan sign with literally six albums like i'm still flabbergasted but that was the first binder down
Okay, so this is my binder for the boys, or more specifically, Kevin, although <laughs> there are other people in here. <laughs> ah, so yeah, when I first started collecting the boys, I was collecting four members, but due to the large amount of times that I was scammed in Maverick era, I think it was, yeah, Maverick era, and then what came after that? Who knows what came after Maverick? I don't know. I don't know. But Maverick and then the era that came after that, um, I stopped collecting four members. So I used to collect Kevin, Sanu, Nu, and then Q. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Nu. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Not our birthday. But yeah, now I only collect Kevin because I cannot be bothered with that community anymore. Um, not to say that everybody who you know collects and trades the boys are are bad it's just you have to really invest a lot of time this is my favorite cue card like by far i love this card so much it might be my favorite the boys card honestly if you don't know i'm also a coca-cola collector even though i don't drink coke anymore because i drank too much and it burned through my gallbladder and i had to have it surgically removed anyway um i still have like a real fondness for like the coca-cola aesthetic but I drink Pepsi now, Pepsi Zero to be specific, which just so happens to be endorsed by 80s. That's a coincidence, <laughs> but a lucky one. Anyway, um, so yeah, I feel like any new community you get into, you really need to take your time and get to know, you know, kind of the vibe of the community, who's a trustworthy gom, you know, and everything like that. And I did not do that. I was just like, oh, it'll be fine. It was not. It was not. Please do your research if you are thinking about, you know, joining a new goal for the first time. Um, don't always just trust a large account because the two people that I got scammed by were very big accounts that were holding very large goes. Um, so yeah, don't be fooled by that. Sometimes go small golems are great. They can, you know, have a fast turnaround, get you your cards. I also love this. I just love Hugh's cards. <laughs> I think he is the cutest. I think he is so cute. Um, if I were to pick up another member of the boys in the future, I would probably do Kevin and Hugh and call it at that. But uh, I don't know if we'll do that. Um, and maybe Jacob because I have a soft spot for Jacob. Um, but yeah. So that is why I only collect Kevin from the boys, in case you did not know. But I'm happy with this collection, honestly. Well, like, it needs a lot of work. <laughs> but, like, I'm happy just collecting Kevin. He is pretty easy to collect. So I really don't have problems, even if, like, you know, the boys comes back at an inopportune time, a.k.a. when ATs is dropping Wonderwall merch for the 50th time. Um, I know I can always get Kevin's cards later, and if I find a cute cob of him, I know it's not going to be super expensive or super hard to find or anything like that. So, yes. We'll just skip all these blank pages. Um, I do still want these Dance, Dance, Dance books for my top four, though, just because I have news already. Like, if I only had Kevin's, I would just leave it at that, but I have new, so, like, <laughs> I feel like I should still get all four. Um, but you really don't see these being like sold or traded too often. So if I see them, you know, I'll, I'll get them, but I haven't seen them, but also I haven't looked. So anyway, um, but yeah, so I'm really enjoying just collecting Kevin for now. Although I really do miss the aesthetic of having all four members. Cause I think it is really, really gorgeous. And I really, really love the boys music. Like they're Japanese albums. I don't know why, but they're Japanese albums slap so hard. <laughs> <laughs> like they really do um I typically love all of their b-sides so I really didn't mind like collecting a lot for them since I really really love their albums and I really really love them but yeah being scammed is not fun so that that was that was a no for me that was an all for me fam and we are at the end of the boys binder oh that whole thing just came right on out okay I see you. You want attention. Okay. Do you, boo? Okay. 
Okay, so next up is my TXT binder, which desperately needs a new cover, but like, which of my binders don't? I plan to do that eventually when it's not tax season, which like, again, I am a tax accountant as I'm filming this. It is tax season and I am working an insane number of hours and I just don't have time uh, to do many side projects. So I'm hoping after tax season, especially in the summer when it's real slow for us tax accountants, I can like really like make my binders cute how I like them. So anyway, um, this is my TXT binder. <laughs> it's a little confusing since I like switched biases or more accurately didn't have a real third bias. So just collected the member that I pulled the most, AKA Subin, and then actually did have a bias and replaced Subin with him. So anyway, <laughs> uh, but I'm still missing a lot of their older cards, but I'm working on it. Um, so somebody asked me what is my favorite part about collecting and it is by far the community like sometimes it can be um really terrible and really sad especially when you know uh, scammers are on the rise and you know cards don't show up in the mail but along with that you really meet some great great people if you don't know me, um, I am incredibly antisocial, like to the point to where I literally never go outside. I order delivery, like delivery groceries, delivery food, <laughs> delivery everything. And I'm just like, leave it outside the door. You'll never see me. Um, so uh, needless to say, I don't go to a lot of social gatherings or have a ton of friends. And I, I truthfully don't really want a lot of friends. That seems like a lot of effort. Okay, air conditioner. Hold on. Okay, don't mind my air conditioner who is acting like everything is about her. Um, <laughs> um, so that being said, I don't want like a ton of friends. I'm more of a quality over quantity person. And the two people who I consider my very best friends, I met through K-pop. I love them so much. If you're watching this video, I love you so much. <laughs> Thank you for being my friend, even though I am so loud. <laughs> For an antisocial person, I'm so loud. It's not that I'm, like, bashful. Like, I can go out and socialize with people and, like, everything like that. I just don't want to. <laughs> I just do not like to. Like, if you saw me in person, like, I could carry a conversation and you'd be like, oh, wow, she's really outgoing. But then you would, like, never see from me see, or hear from me ever again. And I'd be like, okay, maybe not. Um, so yeah, I just don't particularly like socializing with a lot of people, but despite that, this community brought me to some of the two greatest people that I feel are on this earth, and so I am so super grateful for that. I love them both to the moon and back, and I'm so happy that, you know, they found my channel and through extension found me, and we, we have happy times and sad times, but mostly happy times. Um, I also love that th I have so many mutuals that follow me on Instagram. If you found me from Instagram and came here or found me here and then went to my Instagram and interact with me, I love that so, so, so much. Oh, good. <laughs> my air conditioner decided to stop. Yay. Um, but yeah, I just love that I have so many people that like when I'm excited about something, I have people that I can share it with and they're excited too. And I really, really love that. So by far my favorite part about collecting is the community. So I also feel really sad for people where the community is not good. Um, people that have like especially toxic fandoms and there's not really a sense of camaraderie and there's a lot of solo stands like I feel really bad for those people that they, you know, aren't getting the full experience that K-pop can offer. But for me, that's not the case. I think 18 are very, very sweet and very, very trustworthy. Um, so, yay. And that is the end of the TXT binder. All right. So next up, we have my Enhyphen binder, <laughs> which I'm really upset about because, like, it's full I always try to deny when my binders are full, but like, this is so full. I need to do something about this. Um, somebody also asked me, um, besides ATs, um, which group besides ATs do you collect the most for? 
for sure in hyphen. <laughs> this is a three inch binder and, and it's full. It is so full. Um, I have recently been thinking that I'm not going to collect as much for in hyphen. Uh, I'm wavering on that though, just because I really, really love how this collection looks. So for in hyphen, I collect He Sung, who is like my baby boy. That is like been my bias from day one. I was willing to like burn down the whole Korea, North and South, if he didn't make it. <laughs> that's so, that's terrible. I'm kidding. Please know that I'm kidding. Um, I have very dark humor. Uh, but like, for their uh, survival show, Island. Like, if he sung wasn't going to make it, I just really would have been done with the whole thing. Um, and then Sanu and Jungwon. So, um, Sanu was actually my second bias. I think he is just the cutest little boy on earth. Like, he is so adorable. And then Jungwon, I just tend to, like, pull a lot. So, I just kept him. That's a common theme. Like, I'll just pick a third with, like, no regards to anything. And, like, without fail whoever i pick is like my third that i'll collect ends up being incredibly expensive and that is certainly the case with jung wan um he song was not very expensive song was kind of in the middle jung wan astronomical <laughs> like why um so yeah at some point like my my bias pulling luck changed i still don't pull he song like I still don't pull Hizong, but that's neither here nor there. And I stopped pulling Jungwon as much, and that is when I noticed the problem. I think it was not in this era, but the next one that like I didn't pull any Jungwon, and I was like, oh my god, is this what it's like out here in the streets? <laughs> uh, and so yeah, it was just kind of like the Jungwon prices. And that, yeah, I pulled literally nothing for this era. I had to buy all of these cards and it was such a struggle. It was such a struggle. Um, but I was kind of fine after that. And then this is the era that broke me, like dead ass. <laughs> Manifesto broke me. Um, I didn't pull pretty much anything of any of my three biases. It was super hard to trade these cards um, just because there were so many of them. And so it made the likelihood of somebody else having the card that you need and you having the card that they need very, very low. Um, and it was, it was just a whole mess. Like, that's why this is still not done, even though, like, I can feel in my bones that an hyphen comeback is coming soon. Like, I think everybody's about to do a summer comeback, ATs and hyphen, like, a, a, all the big ones. Um, but yeah, Manifesto was just not it. Um, I again still haven't finished it to this day and it's been so long um and I just don't like to struggle for non-80s people I'm gonna be honest like I'll struggle for 80s 80s is sometimes a real struggle but you know those are my precious children and I will go through hell and high water for them anybody else I'm like mm, mm, mm. <laughs> um and so he sung um, you know, I'll go through, I'll go through it for He Sung, but I'm like, for all three, that's kind of too much effort. So I decided that moving forward, I really only wanted to focus on collecting He Sung and maybe doing more for him, um, such as getting some pops, because I usually don't collect pops, but to be honest, I don't really like high pops. They honestly, they kind of ugly. I'm not, I'm sorry. They're not like ugly ugly because obviously like they're they're pictures of the kids so like <laughs> but like I feel like the way that they choose to do their pops is just not it um so I don't like a lot of them which has been great for me because that means I don't need to collect them and the few that I have really loved I've collected with relatively no issue but like all of this extra stuff that I collected for all three of them I just don't know if I want to continue to do that. Look how cute it is, though. <laughs> uh, I can't. Um, I really have grown to love all three of them so much. I really love all of and hyphen. I think they're such cute, talented boys, but the mm, they're mm, mm, <laughs> their fandom is just like 
bad. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to be nice. If you can't tell. Usually I would just say what's on my mind, but some people don't like that. So I'm trying to say it in a nicer way, but bad. <laughs> it's kind of the way that I feel about the Stray Kids fandom because people are like, "Oh, you you know love Felix and Sungmin and Changmin, and you love Stray Kids music. Why don't you collect them?" And I'm like, "Because their fandom is a freaking hate crime waiting to happen. Like I can't be in there." Um. <laughs> So, no. Uh, so this is like my little Hisung pop page. Like, I think these are super duper cute. Like, Hisung on a bed of fries. What's not to love? <laughs> what is not to love about that? So the very few pops that I have, like, really, really loved, I've collected. But other than that, I just don't care for them. Like, their, I feel like their debut album pops really looks like this. And in my opinion, this looks like a freebie. Like, looks like I printed it out myself and like I'm like not down for that so that's why I don't collect a whole lot of pops for him at this moment they have been getting kind of better though so that's why I'm thinking you know maybe collect two less members and more he sung but I don't know if I end up you know buying the albums and I pull them again it's going to be really hard for me to like say no and let them go which you will also see is a running theme I just have a real bad tendencies to just keep cards that I pull I get like immediately attached to them and I'm like also this is I'm still missing day one of three for this I just never pulled it and I just put two day three of threes and also I never revealed the messages but like <laughs> I guess that's fine um but yeah I just have a tendency to love the cards that I pull um, but not enough to be one of those people who can just like buy albums and then keep whatever they pull and then like not want to trade or sell or buy or whatever it is. Um, I'm kind of doing that with psychers right now. Like I'm just trying to like keep my pulls and I'm like struggling. I'm like, but I want Junmin's Barnes and Noble card so bad. And I really was about to go to the store today and buy three more Barnes and Noble album to try to pull him. But my friend told me not to be crazy. And I was like, you know what, friend? You right. <laughs> You're right. I, sh I shouldn't be crazy. Do I still keep Loki want to do it? Yes. But I'm, I'm trying to be more mindful in 2023 and not just buy copious amounts of albums. Will it happen? Yes. But I'm hoping it'll happen less than it did last year, which would be a win. So... We are at the end of the Enhypen binder. <laughs> so this is my Ten and Beckham binder. Uh, my other two ults that are not 80s. I had them together because I didn't have much for either of them um, in the beginning when I first, you know, started putting their collections together. But now they have very much outgrown this binder. So I think I'm going to move Beckham to his own binder. Um, and keep 10 in this one, just because Beckhan has less stuff. I collect a little bit less stuff for him. Um, just because I didn't start collecting Beckhan until like 2018? <laughs> Question mark. Um, pretty late in EXO's career, honestly. And so by that time, they already had like 5 trillion things because SM knows no bounds with capitalism. Um, so I really didn't feel the need to like buy a whole lot of extra stuff because I knew like I would never be able to like keep up or catch up or whatever it is. So I feel like a lot less stressed about collecting extra things for Beck Ken um, rather than Ten, who like is still pretty, you know, not new, but he's like, he's seasoned. <laughs> he's, he's been here for a minute. Um, but it's, it's not impossible. You know, I don't feel for me to like collect a lot of extra stuff for 10 and feel somewhat, you know, caught up in, um, you know, with his collection. I don't know how to explain that, but <laughs> so I collect a lot more, um, for 10. He's also a lot more active then XO Beckhan as a soloist is pretty active. Well, he was, and then he was in the military, and now he just got out. Like, he, he literally like just got out like a week ago, <laughs> two weeks ago. I don't know. Um, 
And EXO is supposed to be having a comeback, but we'll see. Super M is also supposed to be having a comeback. Again, double we'll see. But um, even when Beck Ken does like solo stuff, there's usually not like a whole ton. It'll be like a little bit of a merch drop and then maybe two, three bobs. <laughs> so it's not like a whole lot of stuff. Beck Ken doesn't grow very fast. I have a good bit of all of his older cards and the ones I don't have are either very expensive or hard to find. So he just grows at a much slower rate than 10. So I'd rather give 10 this bigger binder and take all of Backhand stuff out and put Backhand into like maybe a one, one and a half inch binder. But I don't know. I've had them together for so long. I'm feeling like very sentimental about it. Don't mind this random win-win. I just needed to fill this space and I love win-wins. Um, so yeah, that's why I haven't moved them. Because like, they're both in Super M and I just think it is so adorable. I think it is so cute. Um, just having them together and them being in Super M and having that, you know, connection and everything like that. So I don't know. That's why I have kept them together all this time, but they really need to separate. <laughs> They need to be apart. <laughs> so in 2023, I'm definitely going to have to move back in out and, you know, give Tin all of this space so that he can continue to grow and flourish with all of his many little cards that look the exact same because SM doesn't know what taking a new picture looks like. They said, use the same picture, crop it slightly differently. <laughs> anyway. So I was also asked what my least favorite part of collecting is and like pretty obviously scammers like don't be a scammer. <laughs> I feel like nobody should have to tell you to not be a scammer and yet here they are out here scamming. <laughs> um. There's also like something else that I find kind of like a negative aspect of collecting that gets talked about kind of in passing, but um, is like a very real problem. But since we are at the end of the Ten and Beck Chem Binder, I will go more in depth. Ah, can't see the backs. Ha, ah, there we go. In the next binder. Okay, so this is my NCT binder. Uh, this is a four inch binder and again, almost full. I feel like I don't collect that much for NCT, um, but because there's so many members, even if I don't have that many cards per member, it really adds up. Um, so I'm trying to not keep as many cards from them going forward. But anyway, so... <laughs> To continue what I was talking about, about my least favorite part of collecting, um, there is kind of like a dark aspect of collecting mentally, um, which affects more people than I, I feel like we realize. And it's this like, like this desire and this drive and this like internal need to have absolutely everything for your bias. And I am no stranger to it. So I am a person who is highly perfectionist. I don't like um, not having something. Things that are missing tend to drive me insane. Um, and because of that, I will sometimes like give in and pay prices I know I shouldn't just to like have that feeling go away. Uh, which if you're not a completionist and you're not a perfectionist, you're probably like, what? That is crazy. <laughs> um, but if you are, you very much know like the, the like gnawing feeling that I am talking about. And it just sits there in like the back of your head and it kind of like consumes you to the point where it's like all you can think about. And you're like, I am missing this thing. I need this thing um, no matter the cost. And like, it is very bad. Um, so like I said, I'm I also have um, Coke collectibles. I collect Coca-Cola, but I am just a person who hoards things by nature. I also collect manga and DVDs and dimes, <laughs> like the little monetary coin 
we use here in the U.S. I think they're so cute. I just think they're so cute um, because I'm a child of Japan <laughs> exports, a child of Japanese exports, and anything small and round is cute. I, I don't know. Um, so dimes being small and round, I just find so cute. You can thank Japan for that. Um, but <laughs> so I'm just a person who like holds on to things and has a really big tendency uh, to collect things in general. So me discovering K-pop collecting was kind of like the best worst thing that could ever happen to me. <laughs> um, just because I, I just have a tendency to like hoard things and keep things that I shouldn't. Like I have so many cards, um, even in this binder in particular, where I'm like, this is not my bias and I should not be collecting them, but here I am with all of them. Um, and, you know, I am very grateful and very thankful and very blessed that I am in a position to where it doesn't really, like, affect me a lot financially. Like, do I spend a lot of money? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, however, at the end of the day, I still have, you know, a full savings account. I still have my 401k. I still have, you know, all of my bills paid and everything like that. So I am blessed to be in a position to where I can, you know, collect things and hold on to things and keep things and it not really um, affect me too much in that way. Not that I love spending thousands of dollars on K-pop a year, um, but I do want all of the Hong Yoon's. <laughs> so that's a trade-off. Um, but I think, you know recognizing that some people are not in that position. And so um, having that feeling and not being able to satisfy it can put a lot of people in a very bad mental state. And I think that is also a really big contributing factor as to why we are seeing a rise of scammers. Because if you don't have the money, but you, you know, this feeling is driving you crazy to the point to where it's pushing you to where you will steal from other people who have the same hobby and the same passion as you um, just to get rid of it. Like that's a very big problem. So I can't say like that's 100% of the scammers out there. They're just people struggling. Um, there are just bad people. <laughs> like for real Z's, they're, they're just bad people out there. Um, but I don't think all of them are just people that are like, hmm, I want to make a quick buck. What can I do? Because I don't think those people would think k-pop first of all like maybe since like the rise of bts in the west but i don't think their their first thing is gonna be like you know what makes a lot of money k-pop cards <laughs> a lot of people still don't even know like when i go to target and buy 12 albums <laughs> people are still like oh what kind of book is this and then i have to go into the awkward explanation of this book comes with you know one of 23 little pieces of cardboard of Korean children halfway across the globe that don't know I exist. But anyway, can I please just pay you my $300 and be on my way? Uh, <laughs> so I, I, ju I just think that um, collecting reasonably and responsibly should, you know, be more on more people's priority list. It's definitely something that I'm trying to focus on in 2023, not necessarily collecting less because like, let's be real, um, I am who I am, but I want to collect more mindfully. So instead of starting new collections and you know, this and that, I mean, I'm going to start new collections because for one, Psychers just debuted. So like, um, but like, instead of starting like a bunch of new collections and pursuing, you know, new things, I want to try to, uh, really hone in and focus on my existing collections and, um, finding the things that I'm missing, things that I have put off in favor of new collections or because, you know, I want this, that, and the other, I really want to curate my collections and, you know, make them really full complete, beautiful, magnificent, you know, collections instead of having a bunch of cards, but of just like random people and nothing goes together and all of that. Um, 
I think for me personally, my collections aren't too bad. I say as I'm in my NCT binder, honestly, but <laughs> there's so many people in NCT. What are we up to with the new rookies? Didn't we get like three new rookies that are going to be in uh, NCT Japan? So we're up to like 20, 26, 25? We're up to like 25 or 26. And I'm like, why don't you go ahead and slap slap a couple more and just make it 27 and then we can be like we are one 27 and what you you get it <laughs> i'm so much um but they have already said that like no they are ceasing and desisting they said cease and desist no more <laughs> this is too much um which is good because there's there's already so much talent here and like people get really upset because you know we didn't have a wavy comeback for quite some time and then other units are overworked and Mark is in everything. It's like, okay, we gotta, we gotta do something about this. But yeah, so um, I'm just trying to be more cognizant of that fact, um, just because there are so many more collectors now than there used to be with the rise of K-pop and everything like that. Um, I feel like a lot of people are getting that feeling more and not really like knowing how to handle it or what to do with it. So trying to be more mindful in 2023 about that, but it is also something to be weary of um, when you are collecting and that, that would be a very much a downside and probably the least favorite part is that that can happen to so many people. But yes, what I said earlier, scammers bad. Scammers are also bad. Like, don't scam people. You, don't be a scammer. I, sh I shouldn't have to say that, but if that's you, don't be out here. I don't approve. Okay, so this is my Monster X big binder. I also have a, an A5 for Monster X, but this is basically where I keep all of their um, Kino cars for my top three members in Monster X. If you could, if you could even say that, I really love all of Monster X. I collect uh, Minhyuk and Ju Honey pri uh, primarily. I used to collect Chen Ken, but I got overwhelmed with that, so. I still collect his Kino cards, but um, I don't necessarily collect his album cards. I love these. These are my favorite three cards. These are my favorite three Monster X cards. I love them so much. I think they look so cute. <laughs> I think they were like a fan con card. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I just want to take a moment in this in this short binder here to thank the couple of people who were just like, hey, I don't have any questions. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I really love your videos. Thank you so much. Um, I'm in my living room now, but like um, for the longest time, I was literally just a girl talking to herself in her closet. And so like the fact that you saw that and were like, you know what? She's chill, kind of like her really warms my heart so thank you so much i really appreciate it i think a lot of the questions that i got were 80s related which like fair i collect a lot of 80s <laughs> so i really can't answer like a lot of them until we get to the, to the copious amount of 80s that i own but yeah, this binder is really just for like things like this, Kino cards, and then cards of the other members that I get. But yeah, I also have a Monster X larger inclusions binder, but I don't know where it is, to be honest. <laughs> My larger inclusion binders are kind of, kind of lost currently. I don't want to say lost misplace in an area of which I do not know the location of. Let's let's go with that. So, so this is my Monster X A5. We're getting into all of my smaller binders and then we'll, we'll size back up. <laughs> okay, so I am still missing um quite a bit of older mon I love this dandelion in here. It was gifted to me by my friend. She's a mom baby mainly. Love it. Um, I'm still missing quite a lot of their older era PCs, but I think I'm doing a pretty decent job 
of keeping up with their newer eras. So I'm really proud of that because if you have been on my channel for a while, if you saw this binder when it first began, <laughs> it was really just kind of like a whole lot of nothing. There was just a whole lot of nothing in here. So this binder has really, really come a long way. And now I am really, really proud of this binder and like really happy with it. Um, so much to the point that now I don't want to put them. <coughs> that now I don't want to put them back into an A4. My original plan was that Monster X has so many cards that I got overwhelmed collecting them. And so I would just kind of like put off collecting them. Not because I didn't love them and didn't want their cards, just because like, I could not fathom like and I got so confused with everything so I moved them into this A5 binder to focus on Minhyuk and Honey um, because I can just you know fill these two pages and not have to worry about anything else and it really 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 helped me um, not only to collect them more consistently and everything like that but um, it also helped me to not get stuff <laughs> just because it was cute because I was like oh I don't want to you know ruin my my four pattern layout this is the newest era a lot of minhyuk no honey <laughs> uh, um it also helped me you know kind of cut down on getting extra stuff so I really like that but yeah this binder is full this binder is very full and so I've been debating on if I want to go ahead and transition them back to the bigger A4 binder or if I just want to get a second A5 for them because, yeah, I just really love this. Although I do collect a lot of their um, collab cards. Uh, Minhyuk does collabs with Flown and then with Champion and then Honey does um, some Born Champs things. So, yeah, I just love those cards. So. I collected them. Also, I love skincare. I just, I just love skincare so much. <laughs> so like him having a skincare line and like the skincare like actually hits, like it's actually really, really good. <laughs> ah, but yeah, so that is my Monster X A5. She's so cool. I have to do something. That's also 2023 is going to be starting new binders for so many of my collections. And I don't know where I'm going to put all those binders because it's not like I don't have extra binders. I have like a dozen but I don't know where I'm gonna put them so this is my a5 general boy group binder so this is where I put um, a couple of my rookie groups that had just debuted so in the front is Tan, which I collect the most for out of all of these groups because of this man right here Jae Joon oh. uh, I just love Jae Joon so much um, but pawn cards kind of drive me insane. If you saw my last storing video, like they drive me up the wall. But I watched um, Yasingdu or what is what is what is that wild <laughs> wild duel? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Wild Idol. Basically, <laughs> it was a show where like they literally had to go like camp outside for like three months while they filmed this and they had to do everything outside so like on top of like passing all of these missions where you know they had to like do idly things like sing and dance and have charisma and, you know all of that they also had to like just live outdoors <laughs> for no reason climbing up mountains throwing boulders I wish I was kidding but I'm not but yeah I watched that show absolutely fell in love with Dejun and with Taehoon. So I decided when they debuted that I was going to collect them. And honestly, I really enjoy collecting them. They're not really expensive. They're not, you know, tough or anything like that. So I just really, really enjoy it. Um, but they need to work on them card sets. Okay. Insanity. It has not even gotten better. Like, we're on the fourth album. You would think they'd been like, ah, oh, okay, yeah. None of our sets match. We should work on that. Nope. They're just still out here. They are just still out here with non-matching card sets. But anyway. 
Next up, we have Jin Hyuk back here. I really need to like fix all this, but I said that earlier. Um, so Jin Hyuk debuted in TNX. I didn't actually watch their show. Um, I was just like completely blown away by this boy when they debuted. As soon as he told me to move, I was like, well, that's my child. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> Uh, so I decided to collect him. Again, he is also not very hard, and his pops are just so cute. Like, look at this. I haven't started on his new era yet, but, like, I'm getting to it. And I think that's all that's in this one. So, yeah, I just have Jin Hyuk and then Jaejun and Taehyun in here. Okay, so next up we have my Cravity Taehyung binder, or as I love to call him, Young Tae. This boy is just so adorable. I love the whole entirety of Gravity. I think they are all so very cute. Um, and I just love, I'm not really a light concept fan. If you've been around here for a while, you would know I love me a good black on black, dark concept, can't see anything that's going on because everything's so dark. Um, Gravity, I just love their light concept. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the few groups that I truly love their like light concept gravity has done a couple of like darker concept things and although I still like it I don't think it is nearly as good as when they are doing just fun cute light concept things and young pay is my baby <laughs> that's my baby boy I just love him so much um, I also really wanted to collect Hyungjoon, but this was a time when I was like, okay, no, let's, let's not be crazy. Let's just collect one. Um, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? Um, I just really love Gravity content, like, so much. It never fails to cheer me up. When, like now, I'm having like a hard tax season or just like a hard day in life, I know I can watch some gravity content and watch Young Tae and it will 100% cheer me up. So he, he is just like my little sunshine baby and I adore him so much. So um, I do just kind of collect whatever for him. I love this card so much. <laughs> it's him with Young T. Um he has a broadcast card that has this, and I saw it for sale, and it was a pretty reasonable price. I think it was like $40 or $50, which for a broadcast card is like really, really reasonable, and I regret not buying <laughs> I didn't buy it because I was like, okay, no, you don't need to have broadcast cards for Gravity, but now I low-key kind of regret it because I would have loved that card to bits and pieces, but it's fine. It's fine. But yeah. So he is somebody that I will like collect his bigger inclusions and things like that for um, just because everything is so cute. <laughs> everything is just so cute and I love it. They have also had a new comeback. I don't even have his like, what was it? Something about a wave. I'm thinking of wave of nine, but I'm pretty sure that's SF9. So that can't be it. <laughs> was it just new wave? I think it was new wave. Um, they had the new wave come back, which I've purchased all the cards for, but I haven't shipped them to me. They're still at my K-Addy. And now they've had another comeback or are having another, another comeback. And I'm like, okay, yeah, glad I'm not behind because, wow. Also, if you have never been here, I refuse to pop out the Starship cards because it gives me anxiety. Okay? If you have ever seen somebody try to pop this out and the whole thing rip. Like, I have that real internal fear, and so I will never pop these out. And so that is, this is how I store these cards. Just in case you're wondering, like, Shy, you know you're supposed to pop those out. I know. I'm aware. I know. Okay? I'm a crazy person. I know. <laughs> but yeah, that is the end of the Young Tay binder. Oh, oh, so cute. I love him. Okay, so this is my last non-80s binder. <laughs> We've made it to the, I don't even want to say halfway because I feel like I collect like two thirds ATs, one third everybody else. <laughs> but this is my girl group binder. So this originally was just going to be Yeji's binder and then, you know, Espa <laughs> and Purple Kiss. So 
they all share a binder just because for all three of those groups, um, I really just collect album cards and then select other few cards. I suppose more of like a non-collection collection. Um, but all three of these, um, I tend to keep up with, I would say. I'm still missing a few cards from Yeji's older eras because I really only started collecting her um, right after Crazy in Love era. Or, yeah, that's Crazy in Love, right? What was the name of that album? I don't know. Can't can't recall. K-pop brain. Um, but yeah, Purple Kiss I have been collecting since their debut. I used to collect three members and that was a little bit too much for me. So I just went down to two members. So I collect Doshi and I collect Juan because they are beautiful, wonderful, perfect angel baby girls. <laughs> I'm so much. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. Um, but I think they are just so cute. They are so, so, so cute. And I really love Purple Kiss music. If you have not heard Swan's voice, like you are seriously, seriously missing out. Stop right now and go listen to Sweet Juice. Like, I am serious. It'll change your life. <laughs> like that song is so good. It's in my head right now. Um, but yeah, I really, really love uh, Purple Kisses music. And the girls are so, so, so very cute. Swan is absolutely my little baby. I just want to pinch her at all times. <laughs> Not in an aggressive way. <laughs> in a grandma way I just want to like love her you know <laughs> I just want to love you <laughs> I swear I'm so much um I do have these last two cards coming for them and then I have already completed their cabin fever which is uh the name of the album that has the title track sweet juice on it I have already completed um that whole thing it's just again all on the way to me still um but then we go into Espa. I absolutely love Winter and Ming Ming. I wanted to collect them when they debuted, but they didn't have an album. <laughs> and like, then like SM just kind of like put them in the basement for a year. And I was like, what are we doing? Um, so at that point I was like, okay, I don't really want to deal with that. So I decided that I wasn't going to collect them. Um, and then they came out with, you know, a physical album for you know everything that they have done currently and I low-key regret not collecting them <laughs> but it's too late now okay all of the girl groups that I love are crazy priced because if you don't know I also love um Stacy like a whole lot and if I could collect Jay and Suman I would uh not Suman <laughs> Uh, if I could collect Jay and Tian, I would, but like, I really can't. Um, and then of course I really love La Seraphim, but like Taewon and Yoonjin are so astronomically priced. It is not even funny. Like I can't even laugh. So that is my girl group binder. This one's also getting a little bit full. It's not too bad yet. Like I still have space and these collections don't grow a whole, whole lot since I only do mainly album inclusions for them but yeah if it ever did need a new binder um I would just buy another one of these because I like this hollow pink a lot but yeah that's girl group so now with that it is time to get into 80s so okay is it okay so real? this is the first of three a5s that I have for 80s I swear, sometimes I don't realize things until I say it out loud, and this is one of them. But anyways, so this is the one that I mainly keep their Japanese kind of Tower Records cards that I collect for just my top four members, because that's my effort of not being crazy. It's like, well, I'm only going to collect 50% of 80s. That's 50% less crazy. <laughs> a significant amount of less crazy if you think about it mathematically and not you know looking at this in in the crazy way that it is <laughs> but yeah so this is mainly their japanese cards these are the 18 versions of the japanese album and then i also keep um group cards in here so these are broadcast group cards which is why they're right there this is a random san mmt japanese version of episode Finn. Anyway, that was a long, that was a long way to describe that. But yeah, I keep all of my like unit 
and group cards in here just because they tend to not look great in nine patterns because there's never nine of them. <laughs> so, yeah, I just keep them in here instead. So this is just all units. These are more Japanese cards. Well, these are from KCON and then these are Japanese pop-up cards. I am really wanting to finish this page this year, but these are very hard to find. So maybe this one pops up every so often. So I'll probably find it eventually, but these cafe 109 cards, these are, um, my more rare group cards. ATs has a lot of group cards. Uh, these ones are the more rare ones. So these are from their debut which are incredibly hard to find. <laughs> They're also slightly holographic. I'll see if I can't. I'm just gonna move the whole binder. Can you see it? No? Do I have to take it out? Probably. I'm so lazy. They're also like double sleeved. I don't know if you'll be able to see. They're slightly holographic, but I don't know if it'll pick up on camera. Anyway, um, yeah, they're from their debut. Um, so they're very, very rare, very hard to find because we had like a whole 7 a teeny back then. This is from um, the Treasure Cafe pop-up that they did. Also hard to find. And then these are more recent group cards that just came with merch, but they, they have nowhere else to go, honestly. Um, I also have like this cute OT8 set because I just wanted, I just wanted all the hearts to be, to be heartened. I wanted the hearts to be heartened. So... <laughs> So I refuse to store it in a big binder for that one simple reason, because I'm a crazy person. And then this is my OT8 set of the bunny PCs. And I just, I just love these. I just love these. And I love this layout. Honestly, if I could collect all my OT8 sets like this, I would. But I have the sheer quantity <laughs> makes that a no. Like I would have to have literally 57 A4, A5. A5 binders to make that happen. So that is all that is in this binder. This binder doesn't grow too, too much. So it's fine being in an A5. So this is my identical <laughs> AT's A5 binder. Um, this one has all of my sets that I collect for my top four in it. So this is a Myrtle set that I didn't want to join a go for. So I just bought the whole set with a friend and I kept half and she kept half. And that's how we did that. So I could have and probably should have just like sold or traded those three. But we all know I have a problem. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to like make this center. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so somebody asked me about my top five Hong Junes. Honestly... This Hongjun was number one for the longest time. I absolutely love this card. Um, if you don't know, this red hair on Hongjun, besides the Cruella hair, which again is more recent, was my absolutely favorite hair on him, like that he's ever done. And this styling when they gave him like the cute blushy cheeks and the freckles and this like long coat. Everything about this era I absolutely love. I was Team Illusion. I lost to Wave, but <laughs> I've been bitter about that for five years. Anyway, um, but yeah, so this is a Treasure Cafe card, and this is one of my absolute favorite Hongjun cards. My first favorite Hongjun card is actually not in a binder. It's about to be framed. That's not a joke. I actually bought a frame, but... It is this card right here. So this is, Hong, I'll take it out a little thing so you can like see the full majesty. <laughs> but also shout out to the friend that made me this top order. Love you. Um, but it's this card. So this is Hongjun's Universe Winner's PC. And him with this bear and the red hair, Hongjun and red hair just gets me, is my absolute favorite Hongjun card to ever exist on this earth. <laughs> It is also coincidentally my most expensive photo card. So like, <laughs> this was, I think, 400 and something dollars. Like th these were very, very limited. And so, yeah, they're, they're just very expensive. They're just very expensive cards. But um, 
Yeah, I just loved it so much. It is my absolute favorite Hongjun card, which is why I have not put it in a binder. And I bought a frame for it. I was like, no, he's expensive and I love him. So he needs to like be somewhere special. But yeah, that's two out of my five favorite Hongjun cards. Um, but yes, that was a detour. <laughs> Um, I have like he would have had almost <laughs> completed this binder, and I'm so happy. If <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still on about that. Um, this, 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 this holographic thing. I don't feel like I. He's like. <laughs> I just need y'all to like see that I'm not crazy and that these cards are holographic. Can you see it? I don't feel like it's picking up on camera. <laughs> I swear he's holographic. I'm not a crazy. Well, I am a crazy person. Let's not lie. I don't know. Maybe you can see that it's like slightly holographic. But this is a Wonderwall card. Wonderwall did um, merch, of course. But they dropped like, oh, if you buy, you know, this. $200 set that comes with a collect book, you'll get a special like collect book card. So this is Hongjun's collect book card and I absolutely love it. So this is number three out of my top favorite Hongjun cards. I absolutely love this card so much. And I also collected it for my top four. <laughs> but yeah, he has pink hair in this one because his red hair was fading. And there's not a lot of pink hair Hongjun PCs out there, but like this one, and he's got the cute plushie, and he's got the freckles, and it's hollow. I own this um, zip-up thing. Everything. Everything about this I absolutely love. So that is number three on top five favorite Hongjuns. A lot of my favorite Hongjuns are in this binder. I just love this look so much. I'm sorry if this flip through was like inconsistent. <laughs> Because I have to keep stopping, but yeah. See, he had like really, really red hair and like it faded to pink when that Wonderwall collab happened. So gorgeous. So top tier. I finally found this swa, by the way. <laughs> For anybody who's invested, I found him. We're good. Um, yeah. And then ah, back here, I just have my top fours um, anniversary edition MMT postcards. So these can be sometimes really hard to find, but I am super grateful that I was able to find and get these postcards for my top four. So I love that. Okay. And like my, my last AT's A5 is my Hongjun binder. I absolutely love this binder. It's one of the few binders that I even bother to like decorate and everything like that <laughs> but of course we have red hair hong june right on the front i swear i love that man and some red hair um i am unfortunately gonna have to like get a new binder for hong june or like separate this one because it's already full i don't know what i was expecting but it's already full i think i'm going to move his more rare cards into a different binder i really kind of want um the like new prism platinum like bigger one just because like it's hardcover and i feel like it would offer more protection in the a5 format but that thing is coming from australia and it's like 40 dollars to ship and i'm like no ma'am so anyway <laughs> this is my hongjun a5 so these are all his uh winners pcs right here his broadcast cards um, I try, well, I am trying to collect his older broadcast cards as well. Hongjun is the only idol that, like, I would love to own, like, every single PC that exists, um, because he is my ult, of course, but that's, that's a difficult task, and if I'm saying that, then, like, <laughs> the struggle's real. Um, I still remember, like, when I first started collecting ATs, Hongjun was not expensive at all. Like he was not a super popular member. Um, if you know ATs pricing, you would know like uh, Jongo is also a very inexpensive member. Hongjun and Jongo were the same price. <laughs> my only problem child was San, who was my third bias. 
And like, I was just, you know, out here, it like having such a fun time collecting long shoes and John And then, I don't know, at some point he joined Demon Line, which I was not aware of. Like, I don't know. I never saw him as like Demon Line with like San Hua and Wu, who I'm not even sure is still on Demon Line. I don't know. I don't know because I don't watch edits like that. Um, but yeah, apparently at some point he got put on Demon Line and so he became a lot more popular and thus a lot harder to collect. And now he is one of the hardest members to collect in AATs. If you do not know, like, oh my gosh, trying to find his cards for resale is like trying to find a needle in a needle stack. <laughs> You're simultaneously gonna find it and also can't find it at the same time. Like, you need the needle that's slightly different than all the other needles. Um, anyway, but yes, yeah, so this is my Hongjin binder. I absolutely love this binder, but it is getting so full because I try to get literally everything with this man's face on it. Um, but yeah, I think I want to, um, sometime this year, separate out his, uh, more rare cards, like his broadcasts and winner's PCs, uh, just from his, like, normal, uh, fan sign cards. But yeah, I kind of want to, like, find a binder that would offer more protection without having to move him to, like, a full A4 binder. But yeah, I also keep some of his photos back here like his Japanese photos his bromides stickers just just things stuff stuff and things I also have his like bookmarks this was like a lucky draw bookmark and then this is a um tower records benefit from the Japanese dvd don't mind this wall don't look at him <laughs> don't look at him <laughs> he's not here don't look at him um, this is one of his broadcast postcards. There's another one that I have been trying to find for a reasonable price, but the prices on these can be wild because they are postcards. Some people are like $30 and then some people are like 150 US American doll hairs. And I'm like, okay, whoa, that is, whoa. Um, this is his benefit from the DVD. And then this is just his like photo set thing the like little envelope his photo set envelope there it is couldn't think of words um that I just wanted to keep because it has his name on it and then this is his coaster from the uh cafe that just stays back here it like rolled around too much when I put it in a pocket so I just put it back here and it stays nice and put <laughs> And this is what the back of my Hongjun binder looks like. We've got butterfly Hongjun back here. Little rose king. I love it. I love this binder so much, but it is so full. And it is not going to last through another era of fan signs. So <laughs> since ATs is probably going to have a comeback in a couple of months in the summer, we're going to have to do something about my this too, ATs That's a future album card problem. binder. This has all of the album cards. From Treasure and Fever era. And so once again, we, we do not have a binder cover. So somebody asked me how long I have been collecting. I've only been collecting since 2019 when the Super M album <laughs> came out. Um, kind of. I bought in, that was like one of my first physical albums was that album I just kind of bought it though and then like didn't really I didn't even know there was a photo card in it to be honest <laughs> ah. um so I mean I guess that but uh, my first like album that I bought with the intent to collect a photo card was of course an 80s album and it was not until fever part one that's when I started like seriously collecting um, that's also where like my first photo card, um, was somebody like asked me like, what was the first photo card that I had pulled? It's also from there. Um, but yeah, so this binder is more like cohesive. This is one of my more cohesive 80s binders. <laughs> 
uh, just because like I went through the effort to like make all of these like backgrounds and display the actual CDs from my albums. None of my 80s albums have discs because they're all here. <laughs> um, I got inspiration from a YouTuber I saw who did something similar, except for she literally just like put tape on the on the cd and just like <laughs> put it on a black piece of paper and was like decoration <laughs> i was like i don't have the heart for that um so i kind of like put my own spin on it but i was definitely inspired by her um also like displaying her discs and everything like that but yeah so this is all of my album cards i started out not collecting ot8 album cards that didn't last obviously uh, i really love the treasure era cards because i love the backs so much they're so aesthetic um and that is why i store them like this i store them in the way that they're supposed to be displayed <laughs> so yeah i still haven't um done ot8 for the mmt cards which are also in here because back in treasure era we really didn't have pops like that we had mmt cards and that was it um, but that is also something I want to work on in 2023 is on my treasure era MMT cards, but yeah, this is the anniversary album. I have their adult cards and their baby cards. <laughs> and then we get into fever one. So the very first card I ever pulled was from the other version. I only bought one. I only bought one set of albums, if you can believe that. <laughs> Shy existing on this earth and only buying one set of AT's albums. Like, wow. Um, but this was the very first Hong Jun card I ever pulled and actually the very first K-pop card that I ever pulled. I did get pobs with this. Um, I ended up pulling like two, I bought from K-Town, but somehow got Apple Music cards. I don't, I still don't understand how that happened, but I did. Um, but yeah, from like my actual albums, this was the very first Hong Jun card that I ever pulled. And like the fact that he's making a heart <laughs> says everything that you need to know. <laughs> um, so I still like love that card and remember it to this day. Um, so yeah. I only bought one set of albums and I pulled Hong Joon like I love it and I did collect all of the um message AR card things they <laughs> people don't like these because they don't have a picture but like if you scan them it plays like a message from the members and like a clip from the story or something like that it's real cute I love it but yeah Fever 2, where I absolutely lost my mind <laughs> and collected everything because I, I was going through Mingi withdrawals. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Like, I was missing that man so much, like no, like no other. I love Mingi so, so much, and he was very much missed. And the fact that he went on an interview, um, I'm pretty sure it was like that show with, with the, oh, I can't ever remember her name. She had that real long hair. It used to be Showterview with Jesse, but then they fired Jesse and then hired that other lady. Who, and, and sorry if you love her, but like in my opinion, is less entertaining. Um, they hired her instead, and they went on the show for guerrilla promotions. Her, somebody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and like she asked them, she was like, "Who feels like they're replaceable in '80s?" And like Mingi Rosa's hand, I was like. <laughs> I was ready to fight. Like, I was like, Minky, I will fight you. You put your hand down. <laughs> you put it down right now, sir. You are not replaceable at all, ever. And don't you ever say or think or be that ever. <laughs> so, yeah. I do have, like, some um, fan replica Minky cards that they made for this era. I refuse to take them out of my binder. I know they're not official, but I, no, I can't. My heart can't take that. So, do with that with what you will, but yes, then we get into Fever 3, which I loved. I loved Hong Jun in this fuzzy hat. I feel like everybody loved Hong Jun in this fuzzy hat, but yeah, me especially. 
I especially loved it. <laughs> uh, and this jacket. I've seen this jacket on like three other idols. And I love that. I love seeing like how stylish just pass around like popular clothing <laughs> items. I just, your song, ah, oh, your song. This is where, like, my just, like, love of cute your song cards kind of, like, kicked in. Um, if you don't know, I collect, like, just chaotic cards for ATs sometimes, and I put them in what I call my chaos section. And, like, I go through phases where I'm like, oh, my gosh, I love a look or, like, I love this member so much right now that I just want to, like, collect them aggressively for a little bit without having to, like, you know, change my bias or do a whole thing. So that is why we have the chaos section for AT, so I can, you know, aggressively love one or the other at a time and be able to give myself the freedom of being able to collect whatever I want for them at any time without, you know, it just being a chaotic mess, really. So then we go into epilogue, which I'm not going to lie. I'm not really a fan of turbulence. I'm not really a fan of slower songs that aren't R&B. Um, but John Lowe was thriving <laughs> and that's my baby. So I still streamed it. Um, I also wasn't a fan of the real, like unpopular opinion, but I wasn't a fan of the real either. Look at these aesthetic-ish backs. Ish. Hong Joon and Jong Oh got the memo. My son, San. My son, San. That's a tongue twister. Um, he. That's him. And then Pink Hair Hua, though. Yeah, we just needed a moment of silence for Pink Hair Hua because I will forever love him. <laughs> But yeah, I think the cards from this era are so beautiful, though. I am in the minority in live and in... <laughs> Sorry. Another dark joke. Okay. <laughs> um, I love their matte uh, square edge or square corner cards so much. Um, people don't like it. They like glossy, round cornered selfies and I'm out here I'm like I love this matte square corner concept card <laughs> but I really do I love it so much um this was like the format that uh ATs originally debuted with so that's probably why I'm like unnaturally attached to it but I really do love it so this was kind of the last era that they gave us the square edge matte cards so I love that about this era but that is all the album cards from Treasure until the end of Fever. Okay, so this is my most recent ATs album card binder. So this is album card binder number two. So this is Movement Forward. So I made this as like a placeholder filler, but I still haven't made like the actual thing and put the discs and, you know, the stuff and the things. So I'll get to that eventually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this has everything movement going forward. I don't know how many eras are going to fit in here. I'm hoping to do like at least another two or so, but I don't, I don't know how many parts movement era is going to have, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was the first time we had digipacks. So that was fun. I said that like it wasn't fun, but I, <laughs> I genuinely really did like it. <laughs> I should mind my tone. Um, what I don't love are these backs. Okay, what is this? We went from having really aesthetic backs that like made a whole picture to just vague blobs of color. This was still nice. Um, especially because the three that I have are the beginning, the end, and then the exact middle. Um, so this, this is nice. I really love how this lines up and that's why I have it in reverse age order is to, you know, make it aesthetic, which some people do not like, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my collection and I want it to be as aesthetic as humanly possible. Um, 
and I think it looks nice with the member sets as well so that is why I have it like that but yeah that was that was kind of the it of the aesthetics like somebody needs to win a fan sign with Hong Jun and be like hey where the back's at because like what is this <laughs> so yeah this is witness era or Halizia era and like these backs mm. I've been thinking about fixing, I don't even know if I could, because like, it's supposed to be this card, and then the blanket card, and then um, these cards to make it a full sentence, but uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We might look into that later, because I just do not like it when things don't line up and even though it doesn't look bad since it's the same pattern repeating if I can make it say the say the sentence I want to but anyway yeah these are the backs of the cars and it's like okay <laughs> like you you couldn't know nothing nothing else like I feel like they gave nothing I'm sorry I'm sorry KQ people who worked hard on these cards the fronts are really cute I love that all of the sets are really, really cohesive. They have really improved on pawn that, like, honestly. But the backs. Did we have to sacrifice the backs? Ugh. Ugh. And, like, please stop it with so many QR cards. I feel like the fave cards did not need to be thick plastic material, like, at all. But I'm going to collect them all regardless, and they know that, so whatever. But yeah, so this is my album cards that I'm working for, for, you know, these current eras. I am missing one Mingi who is again on the way to me from a go. But besides that, I am all current and caught up. Okay, so next up is my ATs Japanese binder. This is a one and a half inch binder um and it's staying pretty comfortably honestly um just because i do, they don't have too too many japanese comebacks so yes um for the japanese stuff i really only tended to collect my top three just because japanese stuff there's always so much like these are all like pop-up cards and tower records cards and car cards <laughs> Uh, but I just really loved how they looked just 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 the three of them just up here however this set I loved so much it was so expensive to collect because I didn't know that these were limited first press cards uh when I fell in love with them <laughs> and so yeah this is like one of the most expensive Japanese sets that you can collect for 80s but I just love it I love concept cards like and I think they look so beautiful here this is one of my favorite eras we got pie chart sign like I love this room um but yeah and then into the A to Z I also ended up collecting OT8 because like I love this concept too they had like a white outfit and like a darker darker outfit and they were selfies it was so cute <laughs> unfortunately this was also an era where we didn't have Mingi so again, this was a time when I was crazy because I didn't have Mingi and I was in my feels. But yeah, so they had limited cards and then they had um, regular cards. I collected them all, OT8 everything. And then this is Dreamers. So I think, nope, we still didn't have Mingi. We still didn't have Mingi for Dreamers era. Collected everybody, collected collect them all they did have 18 cards but those are in my uh a5 japanese binder that's where those are um and then the more recent ones so this is beyond zero i love these these ones i think were the hmv and then these were the tower records or that could be swapped i don't know but yeah, we have everybody. These are beautiful, beautiful hollow cards. I love Rocky. There, that was the end of the sentence. <laughs> I should have said that with more definition. I love Rocky. 
Um, so yeah, selected OT8 of everything. And then I I apparently was feeling too confident with myself, and then we got hit with Paradigm. And Paradigm has so many cards. So many cards. Like to this day, I'm still um missing one card. I have purchased it, but it hasn't arrived to the warehouse, so I don't consider it like in my possession until like it gets to the warehouse and it's been verified by Neokio and then I like mark it off my template cuz you know sometimes orders get canceled so I don't want to mark things off prematurely and then stuff gets here and I'm still missing stuff and then I buy dupes and it's a whole thing. But yeah, paradigm is what taught me the lesson of I cannot collect OT8 AT Japanese cards everything. <laughs> okay, cuz like no. Um these HMVs are so beautiful, though. They're they're sparkly. I don't know if you can see the sparkles, but they're sparkly. So I usually do Tower Records and a full set of HMV because those cards tend to be beautiful. This is also a Tower Records. This is Tower Records, too. There was three. Um, but yeah, as far as album cards, I absolutely could not. Like, whole empty pages. Don't have a singular card for that page. Um these are from their solo jacket they did you know member covers so i did get all of those because they were relatively easy to get so there was two sets i have full set of both but yeah the devastation of paradigm is is so much <laughs> mm, yeah um this was a collab that they had with kim jong cook these are um, the Hello 82 round one and round two cards. So I collected my top four to make this cute little page. And then I collected OT8 of, of this album too, because it was so cute. This was such a cute album. Look at Hong Joon and his little bucket hat. <laughs> so cute. I love it. And they have like little units with Kim Jong Cook. It was cute. It's real cute. Everything's real cute. We have Mingi back. This was one of the first things that were released when Mingi came back to like all around good things. Okay, so <laughs> if you're new to my channel, I always have to make this disclaimer um, just so that people don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> I do but not collect. Say it with me now if you're not new. Do not collect. Park Sung Hwa. I shy. But I do have a couple of cards. And I will deny it. But so, I do have a couple of cards. If you ever say anything Sung about Hwa, this. If you don't know, me and him have the same birthday, April 3rd, which just passed recently. As I'm filming this, it's like April 5th. Oh, it's after midnight. April 6th now. Okay, that's fun. Um... But yeah, I just have a really big soft spot for him. <laughs> uh, he is one of the other members that I have kind of an extensive chaos section for. I would just say people told me I couldn't call this a gathering of fall. So then fine. I hear you. I listen. This is a congregation of fall. Fall just tends to congregate here. It's not a collection. I do not collect him, but like he just tends to congregate in the back of this Japanese binder and I just let him, okay? Pink hair hua. I love this nine pocket of pink hair hua so much. Like so, so, so much. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> and I also love blonde hua. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> like a lot, a lot. These three are some of the most top tier hua cards that of him in blonde hair like if I had to like force my hand and only keep three it would probably be those three I love those so much the bandana hua <laughs> I also love a whole lot um but yeah do not collect him but look at this hollow page love it and then just like a couple of his like photo book cards, this clear heart card that I don't really love, but it's back here. And then uh, tour wristbands from Seoul and Chicago. No, I didn't go there, but they were included in a purchase. So I just kept them anyway. 
That is it for the Japanese binder. This is the first <laughs> of my AT's merch binders. I recently just split them. So these are not real. These are fan-made broadcast cards. I don't buy a lot of fan-made cards, but sometimes they are just really, really cute. And that was the case with these two sets. So I absolutely love those. Okay. But yeah, so this is where I keep um, all of my AT's merch that are kind of like one-off merch things or merch that I'm not planning on collecting more of. Um, things like... Uh, uh, things like uh, one-time merch releases, like this was a Cromer keychain that they had released, a bracelet that they had released, <laughs> um, some of their older um, concert cards. This was for our two-year anniversary. They did a port of call online fan concert thing, and this was the fan con cards absolutely love this. I wish they did more sets like this that I could like make into cohesive things because this is one of my favorite AT spreads like in any of my binders. This is one of my absolute favorites. I love this so much. And then this is what they gave us for the second fan con. <laughs> Not that I don't love it, but like it like when you go from this to this, it's like, oh, okay. All right sure. <laughs> um, these were their very first sound check PCs. And this is one of my favorite sets, um, just because of how I got it. Um, I'm actually um, I actually like, by some miracle, I reached out on my Instagram. And I just posted a general story and I was like, hey, are, do I have any Eurotini um, mutuals who are going to the AT's concert on this one specific date? <laughs> like, I was like, could you please message me? And I don't know, but by some miracle, one person reached out to me and she was like, hey, yeah, I'm going. Um, and so she went to the sound check for me. Like I paid for the sound check. So she got to like meet AT's and like take pictures with them. And she went to the sound check for me to get this set of cards because it was limited to the sound check. And it also came with a sign lanyard. And so she was so kind as to trade to get Hongjun's sign lanyard for me. And I am literally forever grateful to that Europe teeny. Like, thank you so, so, so much. <laughs> so this set means a whole lot to me um, because like I was saying earlier about my favorite thing being the community, like that's something that I would have literally never thought possible <laughs> that I would have a person like so kind enough on the other side of the world to like go to this thing for me and like pick up a sign lanyard for a K-pop thing. Like that's so wild to me. But anyways, so this was their second sound check set. I did manage to find this on, um, mercari japan there weren't any like sign lanyards or anything so this set of cars was easier to get a hold of and then yeah this is more merch i love this because they were all doing gyaru <laughs> and i find that adorable and these little like deco polo styles i love this set there's just a lot of like at's merch sets that i really really love in here but anyway I've got like Japanese stuff, which I thought about putting in a Japanese binder, but I was like, it's Japanese, but it's merch. And the, these like 18 e passes, this is what um, these cards came with. And I'm so grateful that they fit in eight pockets, honestly. Ha. Huh. And then their first three um, tour cards from when they came and did their tour in the U.S. They had three U.S. exclusive sets. I had all three. And then their cash piece. This is such a weird thing to have and to collect. But something about knowing I could go to Korea and pay for transportation with Hong Joon's face just tickles me pink. So I have both sets of cash pee cards. 
the pop-up in LA that was a disaster, but who's surprised? It was run by Hello82. <laughs> and then my Sub-K cards, which I'm like, Sub-K, you good? Like they dropped two Sub-K collabs and then just like never again. Sub-K has never done anything with 80s again. I'm not sure Sub-K cards are a thing anymore. For people who like collect other groups than me, are Sub-K cards still a thing? Do sub -Ks, like still do exclusive pops? I know they used to do them for Monster X and they haven't done them in quite some time. So I'm just like, sub -K, did you just like quit? <laughs> did you just tap out? Like, okay, no, K-pop fans are crazy. I'm not doing this. <laughs> uh, I just thought that was so weird. And then I have um, Wonder Wall sets back here. This came with a water bottle. It was like a water bottle and then like a set of stickers and you were supposed to put the stickers on the water bottle on the water bottle I have neither the water bottle or the stickers because I didn't I didn't really care for it and then this was I think the very first it was either this set or the sub sub K set was like the very 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 first um cards from when Mingi came back I think it was the Wonder Wall set and then um, Sub K released their cards and had Mingi. I could be wrong. That could be flipped. But yeah, these were some of the first sets where Mingi came back from his hiatus. So these are very, very meaningful cards to me and probably a lot of 18 But yeah. And then Wonderwall. Just. <laughs> I just love this look so much. Uh. But these, I have the full set because, again, this is when you had to buy that whole, like, $200 set to get one collect book, which had one special card. I ended up buying, like, three, I think. Because, again, they were very expensive, so I couldn't afford four. And it ended up just buying um, Jong -ho, um his special card later because I knew he would be, you know, easier to find than any of the other members. But, yeah. These are all of my group cards I pulled from the meta albums that they came out with. These are uh, MMT Star 11 uh, 17 Star 11 17 perfume cards, which I actually own the perfume too now as well. I didn't before, but I do now. These are dupes. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure these are sound check dupes. I just honestly didn't know what to do with it. And I keep forgetting they're back here, honestly. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. This is from ATS's very first photo book, but there's actually another photo book called the first photo book. So is this the zeroth photo book? I don't understand KQ's numbering system. But yeah, they had these silver and gold cards. I didn't actually buy the photo book because I thought they looked ugly in the previews. And then I saw them and I was like, oh, wow. They're so pretty. I want them. So I collected them for my top three. And then these are Japanese fan club exclusive um, renewal benefits, I think. But yeah, I collected my top three for these as well. These are just stickers, but I double sided them to make them a little bit cuter. And then these are from the very first ATs DVDs and like this card. This is another top five Hong Joon card. This one's number four. So this is Hong Joon's very first DVD PC. And as you can see, he has pink hair. <laughs> so it was the very first pink hair Hong Joon card to ever exist. And I still love it. I still love it to this day. I really wish he would do like pastel pink hair, but like. I'll keep waiting. I'll keep waiting for that day, home too. But yeah, I love the very first DVD cards. I think they're cuter than the second DVD card, if I'm being honest. I'm being real honest. I think these ones were cuter than the other ones, but they're... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are K-Bang cards. They're a magazine from Germany. Some people have mixed feelings about these cards. I found these for cheap, which is why I have them, but I don't go out of my way to collect them, and I don't pay exorbitant amount of money for them either. This is uh, <laughs> the Taste of Korea campaign that Hong Joon and Yuno know were in. I think it was like a couple of ATs member, a couple of Monster X members. Uh, Rain, Rain was there. 
Brave Girls. And then I think one other girl group was there as well. And they like did this whole thing for Pepsi. And I was like, okay. So I have not only the photo cards for it, but I also have the credit card covers. These are not photo cards. These are stickers that you're supposed to like cover your credit card with. And it has like a little cutout for the chip. <laughs> but I'm a crazy person. So I just collected them. So I have all of that for Hongjin and Yuno. And then I just love rain. So he's just there. <laughs> and then these I made. Those are fillers that I made. Um, and then this is from when they did that terrible drama. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, anytime it's a K drama with an idol in it, it's trash. Okay, it's hot trash. I'm sorry. Like they, I don't, they're like, okay, we have an idol, so we don't have to try basically because they know people are going to watch it to support their idol. And that is exactly what happened with this. Um, what's interesting was that I love um, manga. And so by extension, I got into manhwa, which is like Korean manga. <laughs> what is that? Like Korean comics? I feel like that's not the right word because in America, like comics are different, like a whole different thing. But um, webtoons, webtoons is the thing I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, so I actually ended up reading this. So the webtoon was called Imitation and it was like about idol life and like following a girl group from their debut as rookies from, you know, a poor company and, you know, their rise to stardom and, you know, all the things that came along with that. It was actually a really interesting story and everything like that. However, the drama, <laughs> Yuno know, did great. I just want to put that out there. I loved Yuno. Know. He did great. My sons, they all did good. jong -ho was so cute in that drama. But, um, the drama's hot trash. I'm sorry. The drama's just straight hot trash. It's so bad. The writing is so poor. They changed so many things that the storyline doesn't even make sense anymore. Like, <laughs> like they took out, because, you know, a lot of, you can't make an idol be a bad, bad person in a drama, like, you, because, you know, Korea. So, like, one of the girls that's in the group was supposed to be, like, a bad person. Like, a person that literally tried to poison somebody at one point um, because she was so jealous about all these things. Um, but they just, like, changed it to where she was, like, a little bit jealous, but, like, not that bad. And so, like, I think in the end she, like, got a boyfriend and she, like, lived happily. And I'm like, no, she is trash. <laughs> She's a trash, yo, John. <laughs> and so, like, I went into the series knowing what she was supposed to be and what she was supposed to do. So I like never trusted her and I just didn't like her character at all and how they changed her and anything like that. Anyway, drama was hot trash. Okay, <laughs> so this is my second 80s merch binder. So this is what it got split into. This has a lot of room to grow, <laughs> which is great because 80s drops a lot of merch. So these are also fan-made broadcasts. And I love them. I think these are so friggin' cute. Um, somebody, uh, one of my mutuals did, like, design me a filler in here. I just haven't, like, printed new fillers yet. I usually wait a while until they, like, build up and then print them all at once. So, but something will go there. So, this is where I have decided to keep um, all of the merch that, like, I know I'm going to continue to buy merch that is, you know, connecting to that. Things like Season's Greetings, Fan Kits, things like that. So we have ATs's very first Season's Greetings, which is so cute. And then the second one where they decided, okay, that's enough kindness for you. Now we're just going to put one card in the Season's Greetings. <laughs> so that was the first time they did that. Had a heck of a time collecting those. And then they also did random badges in all of the season's greetings. So that was a fun time. And then the just absolute chaos that was this Sangha card. So I joined, I bought one album and then like I joined a go also. So I ended up pulling Hongjun, getting Wuyang and Jongo in a go. And then I bought Yuno, Yosang, 
Mingyi and San. And then I ended up pulling Songhua. Or maybe I pulled Yuno know too. So like Songhua was going for like an insane price. So I did an insane thing and like bought six seasons greetings. There's a there's a video about it. <laughs> there's there's a video. Um in one of my bias hunt series. And I ended up pulling like four or five of these Songhua. <laughs> so like I have so many, I have so many dupes. I have one in my dupe binder. This one that I keep in the in a top loader. I just keep them on my desk because he's real cute. And then one that like I officially collected. So I'm an insane person. But yeah, and then this is this year's season's greetings, the 2023 season's greetings, where they did give us full set, thankfully. Thanks, KQ. But they were like, there's two sets. But I'm fine with that, honestly. I'd rather buy two seasons greetings than eight seasons greetings. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, and then their fan club thing. So their first fan club didn't have photo cards. They just had IDs. But I just put all of the IDs together because it's just easier. So we're supposed to be getting the fourth gen fan kit soon. So I'll just slide this up and put the fourth ones right there. But I just like to keep all the IDs together. And then... This are, these are, this are, these are the uh, second gen fan kit Polaroids. So this was so cute. They gave us three Polaroids per member. And then this was the third gen kit. Um, these were, if you were a renewing member, the, you got this set of cards. They're like clear cards and they like have cute eating phrases on them and then these are the actual fan kit photo cards. And then this is what they're calling the first photo book. But it was the second photo book. So again, unless the other one is the zero with photo book, I don't know how, how we're numbering these. But yeah, so these were like, you got a full set of these hollow cards as a pre-order. If you pre-order the photo book, which of course I did. And then they came with pop-out cards, but I, again, am a crazy person. I refused to pop these out. So what I did was just cut them all out because they, like, came on one big page. I literally painstakingly cut these all out, not even around the pop-up line because I didn't want to, like, lose the little edge of the picture. So, like, I cut around the whole picture and not just the pop-up line <laughs> because I'm a crazy person. And then after that, we had the fever um, diary photo book thing, which was real cute. I just love this look on everybody. So I collected OT8. And then this was the first set of birthday cards. I collected all the ones with the little drawn houses on the back because I thought that was so cute. Loki bothers me that back when, because Yosung, they started with Yosung. So he was technically the first one, even though he's not the first birthday of the year. But um, he was the first one. So like his packaging that his cup comes in, you can tell he was the first one. <laughs> and then like it was also before they decided to change the, the back of the photo card to yellow. So his is the only one that's white. <laughs> High key bothers me. But anyway, um, there's actually two photo cards, remember, but I only collected one. And then for this year's photo uh, or birthday merch. They only did one photo card and then they did a postcard. So but I'm super grateful about that. I have ordered Yuno and Songho's birthday merch, but they're technically the last ones because they're the earliest ones in the year. It's a whole thing. Anyway, everybody's on the way. <laughs> so um, 18 room merch, they did a pop-up and did trading cards, but I didn't know how many packs I needed to buy to collect OT8. And so I didn't buy enough. And so I ended up having to buy some. Um, thankfully, I was able to trade every single card that was that was a dupe that I pulled. Like, I'm super grateful for that. But I had to buy some because I didn't buy enough packs. So we've got missing spaces. And then the last thing in this binder is my AT's chaos section. So as I mentioned earlier, I go through phases where I just like intensely love a member who's not you know, technically my top four, um, <laughs> if it can really even be called that. I really do love OTA 80s and I would collect OTA everything if I could, but unfortunately, I, I don't make that level of money yet. <laughs> yet. I'm getting there, okay? Believe in me. 
Um, but yeah, so you know kind of started the chaos section because like I said, I started um, collecting ATs heavily in Fever 1. So this is also one of the very first cards that I ever pulled was this you know apple music card and he has pastel pink hair so of course i kept it and then um these are also from fever one these where he has pink hair and that one too <laughs> and i love them and so i collected those two and i pulled his dvd card and yeah just just spiraled just spiraled for you know i love him so much um so yeah, over, over the years, I've just like had a real big weakness for you know, <laughs> just just a real big weakness for you know. So he has the largest chaos section, and then um, I don't really have a ton for San and for Jong Ho because usually if I do get them, I'll just go ahead and collect you know my top four. But this is things that. Either I haven't found the other cards yet, or I just am not going to collect top four for. And then Mingi, who I just love. I just, I just love him. He's my baby, my little princess baby. And then this was the other card I had pulled um, from the first cards that I ever pulled. Because, you know, technically I had pops too. Um, I pulled this Mingi, I pulled this Yuno, and then I pulled Hong Joon's Apple Music as well. And then I pulled, you know, Hong Joon's cute horror card. Um, but yeah, Mingi's Chaos section, and then my aggressively loving Yo Song phase came along. <laughs> so we've got just, I love blonde Yo Song. If you can't tell, <laughs> I love how the great majority of these are like blonde Yo Song. I love blonde Yo Song. I think he's so pretty. Not that he's not pretty when he doesn't have blonde hair, just, you know. Anyway, and then Wuyang. So I have less for Wuyang, not because I love Wuyang less, but just because he tends to be expensive line. So like, I can't just like, oh, this is cute. Let me just pick this up. Cause it's like $30. So like, it's a purposeful purchase at that point. And I'm like, okay, no, we need to, we need to not do that. Um, but if I do find, you know, some like inexpensive Wuyang, I do tend to pick him up because I love him and I <laughs> funny story about this card so I pulled I think you know and your song I pulled you know and your song um for and San and Jong Ho. maybe I did buy four sets I don't know don't ask don't ask future shy what past shy did I don't know um but I pulled, I know specifically I pulled Yuno and Yosang for the Wonderwall special collect book PCs. So I ended up trading um, somebody for Wuyang so that I could trade for Hong Joon. But then I ended up just trading my friend and mutual Song Hua Wu trade. She pulled Hong Joon. And so she traded um, Yuno for Hong Joon because Yuno is her you know, alt bias and ATs. So we pulled each other's bias and she ended up trading me Hong Joon. So I traded for this Wu Young to trade for Hong Joon, but then I didn't end up end up needing to trade him for Hong Joon. So that's how I ended up with Wu Young's special PC. <laughs> I find that hilarious. Y'all are probably like, okay, and but anyway, this is what I have for Wu Young. And that is the end of the merch binder. Can you believe that we have done all this and we haven't done a singular pop yet? <laughs> uh. Okay, so here is my largest and most thorough <laughs> ATs collection. So this is my Fever Pop Binder. Literally all of these pops are just from Fever era. Nowhere else. <laughs> Nothing else, just Fever. So um, I got asked like what is my favorite um, nine pocket of 80s, my favorite Zhang Lo card, um, and like just like my favorite PCs, my favorite filter PCs. I feel like all of that is going to be in this binder. <laughs> uh, so I don't have too many 
uh, OT8 sets from Fever 1, mostly because there weren't many. They did a whole seven fan signs back then. That was it. And, like, for us coming from just having, like, one to three sets of MMT cards, that was a lot. <laughs> we were like, whoa, seven whole fan signs. Now I would literally kill to just have seven fan signs. <laughs> ah. But I think this is actually my favorite set from Fever 1, which is this Apple Music set. Beat Road is very similar, but I collected this one because I had the majority green max. But yeah, and here is the Hong Joon um, Apple Music card that I was talking about. One of the first cards that I very that I uh, pulled. But yeah, so I mainly just collected my top three in Fever Era because I love the way it looks. It's so cohesive. And I low-key want to go back to that. Not even going to lie to y'all. <laughs> but anyway, that was all for Fever 1. Now we get into what is probably 50% of this 4-inch binder. Fever Part 2. So I aggressively, aggressively missed Song Mingyi. And him being on hiatus for that long and us not knowing if he was gonna choose to come back like it was a really really big worry um for a lot of AT. <laughs> um I really just basically poured all of my feelings into my collection and to like aggressively support AT's um and so yeah I own literally um every single set of cards that was made in Fever 2 era <laughs> Every single one, every single fan sign, every single pop. I thought about moving these to um, my my unit card binder, but like because I collected every single thing for Fever Two, like in my brain, I'm like, no, we have to keep all of Fever Two intact because like it's a it's the whole it's the whole era. It is everything. <laughs> so. That's why I haven't taken anything out. And if you don't know, I put these in an H pattern for how expensive this, <laughs> how expensive was this set? Very. It was very expensive. These were the very first unit cards ATs ever did. And, and the price reflects that. <laughs> and then they did weird bookmark ones that I also thought about moving out of here, but I'm like, they're technically still pobs. So... <laughs> so I kept them in here, but mm, I don't, I don't love it. I, I don't love it. Um, but yeah, a lot of these sets are really, really cute. Market Shop is one of my favorites. I love these outfits. I think the coloring of the card looks great. It's one of my favorites. This is a, this is, ooh, this is a pricey set. <laughs> this set took me so long to finish because I didn't get um, Wuyang and Songhua in a go. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh. Like, looking back, I had to pay, like, $50 for just this Hua. And, like, that was a lot for me at the time. I was like, wow, a $50 card. <laughs> little did I know. Little did I know. Um, but that's nothing compared to what he goes for now. So, grateful I bought it then and, you know, just sucked it up and paid it. Honestly, I still don't know Hong Joon's job. They all had jobs for this set. I still don't know Hong Joon's job. Is he a personal trainer? Is he a park ranger? I, what is his job? Is this a Korean job that we don't have here? I don't know what his job is. These were the second set of unit cards, and I love this card so much. Like, so, so, so much. It's one of my favorite unit cards. I love that I got, I have been waiting so long for a freaking Hong Joon Jong Oh card. Like I have Jong Oh with everybody except for Hong Joon. They have never done a unit card. And I'm like, why do you hate me? <laughs> I take that as a personal attack.
No, this page is like not in the thing. Hello, ma'am? So, this is also a contender for, have I already picked four? I think I've already picked four out of my five favorite Hong Joon cards as we've been going through this. I love this card so much. It is hollow. It is in the internal sunshine outfit. It is, it is so beautiful. I love him with this hat so much. I don't know, though, if that's officially my, my fifth favorite Hong Joon card to like, I don't know. I'll decide once I like get through the, get through this, <laughs> but that's like definitely up there. This is my favorite pink hair Hua card though. This set in general, I just love a whole lot. This was from their final um, promotion stage when they were promoting um, Deja Vu and Eternal Sunshine. And yeah, so cute. This, this Jongo. This Jongo is so cute. It's not my favorite Jongo. Somebody also asked me, what is my favorite Jongo? This is a top tier Jongo, but it's not my favorite Jongo. There is a cuter Jongo. I know it's hard to believe because look at him, but like, trust me, there's a cuter Jongo. I also love this set a whole lot. This is him. There's a cute bear Jongo. This might be my favorite Jongo. <laughs> This right here, this might be my favorite Jongo. I love anything where he's in like a bear theme. <laughs> but then there's also this Jongo bear card. But I think this one is just super duper cute because he's not in his corner, which was also a huge factor. I think this might officially be my favorite Jongo card. I think this might officially possibly maybe be my favorite Jongo card. To answer that question. <laughs> I love my cute bear baby. Okay. But yeah, this Everline set is definitely my favorite filter set. Somebody specifically asked me what was my favorite set where they had filters. This one, because not only did I get Bear Jong O and like Cat <laughs> Cat San and Cat I pointed at Hong Jun and said some Cat San and Cat Hong Jun and like all these. But like, look at the pink hair bunny hua, okay? Everything about this filter set, I absolutely love. And it is my favorite filter set to this date. And it's also the filter That's set that took me not the, the irony I needed. Coincidentally. Um, I love this flower set too, though. A lot of my favorite sets came from season three, but like, he had pink hair. So like, <laughs> I am biased. <laughs> but when am I not, honestly? And then he dyed his hair back. And I was like, oh, <laughs> he left us. He hair has gone. I think this also has my least favorite set in it as well. This Harry Potter set is so cute, but San really just fucks up the set. Like, why? Why? Why, son? Why? Okay. So, this. Somebody asked me what is my least favorite photo card. That's not the clear cards that I hate because I just hate clear cards. They look like glorified, glorified freebies. This entire set, honestly, not because it looks bad, but just because of how much of a disappointment it was. <laughs> Um, if you don't know, AT's debut in October 24th to be exact. Um, but yeah, so like just like a week before Halloween. So Halloween has always been like a really big deal for AT &E and AT's and they go all out for their Halloween performances. And this year was no different. So they gave us a killer Halloween performance and then they announced this fan sign they're like guys we're gonna do vampire cards um you know from the music video so like a were so hyped for these cards so many sets sold 
<laughs> Only for us to get them in cheap dollar store vampire capes. Like, <laughs> this is not what we thought you meant <laughs> by vampire cards. Because they look so amazing in that music video. Like, we thought we were going to get the makeup. Because there do exist um, cards of them in their, like, uh, Pirate King era like Halloween makeup when they were told to cease and desist that performance because they literally scared the shit out of a bunch of Koreans and they thought like the real <laughs> coming of Jesus zombie apocalypse was happening like their performance was that like spot on that people were literally panicking in the streets um, and so they were told like never perform that again but um, there are cards of them in that makeup however <laughs> they're broadcast cards and extremely expensive i mean like six seven hundred dollars on a good day expensive so we thought we were going to get like those style of cards of them in their full you know like halloween makeup and like their their outfits and then we got this so i really <laughs> this set is just like a disappointment every time i see it even though like they look fine and if they would have been like oh we're wearing capes i've been like oh okay that's cute but like just the level of disappointment <laughs> um, this set brings me is why this is my least favorite set, card, whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's this, discounting the clear cards because I hate those. But yeah, continuing on. We have lucky draws. This was the first time they did lucky draws. But certainly not the last. <laughs> and then this was, again, another era where I went back down. I was like, let's not be crazy. Let's just collect my top three. And, like, it was a struggle. It was a struggle in the moment. But honestly... I seriously love this so much. I love seeing all three of them on a page. I love how cohesive it is. I can organize these by back color and not really have to worry about it, you know, not looking right because I'll have, you know, the row filled because there's three of them. I've just been feeling really nostalgic for collecting 80s and three, specifically my top three, which still haven't changed. Um, but... It would be near impossible to do at this point because both Hongjun and San are expensive now. Like, it was fine back when Hongjun and Jongo were, you know, lower priced and it was just San who was expensive. Um, but now that it is two <laughs> out of the three, uh, yeah. Mm. And even finding some Jongo cards for this era was extremely difficult. This being one of them. I'm super happy that an Indonesian Atini helps me with this card because he was so hard to find. He was so, so, so hard to find. I'm so grateful for my mutual. <laughs> I feel like this whole video can be summed up is in like, I am so grateful, so immensely grateful for my mutuals. Like you guys save my butt sometimes. And like, I always, you know, make sure to thank everybody in the moment but i feel like it's not enough like i want to thank you more i just want to aggressively thank you thank you so much but yeah these are epilogue pobs i don't think i collected too many ot8 sets for epilogue i was kind of over it at this point like i was this was um i think the only time that i was seriously feeling burned out collecting 80s um, because I was struggling so much with uh, Fever 3 and like even finding Jong-O cards was really, really difficult for me. Um, I didn't collect um, Fever Epilogue when it came out. Like it came out, I watched the music video for Turbulence once and I just ignored it for a month. <laughs> I was like, nope, I didn't watch anything 80s. I didn't even look at the album cards for epilogue like i i just could not even deal with it um and then i came back later after you know taking that break which was much needed and thankfully they weren't too hard to find some of the album cards were kind of hard to find 
but uh, I didn't have too much of a hard time. And then I just kind of bought sets that I could find on Neokyo. I really wasn't picky with like, I want, you know, this set and this. And I was like, whatever, whatever I can find on Neokyo, that's what I'll get. And thankfully there were a lot of fan signs during this era. So a lot of people trying fan signs means a lot of cheap fan sign cards. So um, I do remember specifically pre-ordering this set. Um, because they were in there, the real outfits, and I saw the blurred preview of this hua, and I was like, oh no, if I want this hua, <laughs> I'm going to have to pre-order them. But this was literally a month into fan signs when they dropped this, so they were still dropping fan signs a month later. <laughs> Not that that's unusual now, but yeah. So I pre-ordered that, and I'm so glad that I did, because that hua card ended up being, ooh, ooh. Oh, <laughs> if you had to collect that after the fact, I am so sorry for you. Um, but yeah, these were, I think, more travel packages. This, I think this was a travel package. Because they put welcome, but there's no E. They, they forgot the E for welcome. <laughs> so it's just welcome. Welcome to welcome. <laughs> I love that. And then these make star lucky draws. These were hard. I did not pre-order these. And it is like one of the single biggest regrets of my life. <laughs> I got so lucky that I have alerts set up for ATs on eBay. So anytime anything is posted under ATs on eBay, I get alerts for it. Yes, it is constantly going off, but it saves my butt sometimes. And so these became so hard after the fan sign was over to get and yeah this card and this card in particular <laughs> and to an extent this Leon card but yeah I got lucky and there was an eBay seller um, who dropped these randomly so I ended up buying two of this Hongjun because this Hua had already sold out so I was like okay he's also in demand and so I bought two hoping I could trade for this pink claw and I found a trade thankfully and like never looked back <laughs> oh. but yeah make star lucky draws always get crazy in a teeny land but I also really love these animal filter cards but not as much as the Everline 5 ones but those are super duper cute and then this set Somebody asked me what's the cards I was most excited to receive in the mail. I think it's these because it took a year and a half. <laughs> and I was just grateful <laughs> she sent them at all. <laughs> I had basically given up on these Hello82 2.0 cards. Not a lot of people bought this round of Hello82 because they were like done. They were done at this point. Um, but look at this cute pink hair Hong Joon. I love him. But um, a mutual at that time who used to be trustworthy um, opened for this and she didn't have any Hong Joon spots left. So I ended up buying an OT8 set from her and then um, hosting a mini go and, you know, selling off the other four cards. But yeah, that did not go well. It took a year and a half to get these cards. I ended up having to buy a whole nother set from a different joiner who was like, hey, yeah, I'll sell you most of my set. So that way you can get your cards to your joiners, which I was super grateful about. But basically I had to pay for this set twice. It was incredibly expensive. <laughs> and I was really worried that at some point, one of the people who had joined my go under their go would be making a scammer post like um shy sold me these cards and i never got these cards like i i genuinely was so fearful that i was gonna wake up to a dwayer post <laughs> and i was like no i promised like if i had the cards i would give them and i ordered it and but thankfully they were so understanding and so many other people made you know scammer posts about that gom that um they were pretty understanding they were like oh yeah we we understand it's not your fault they scammed a bunch of people um, so <laughs> these finally showing up, <laughs> honestly, the most excited because I genuinely didn't think I was going to be able to get them and they, they're impossible 
to find after the fact. Like I tried looking because I was just missing Hong Jun and Sung Hwa after I'd bought that set. And like I found Sung Hwa for $80 and I could not find Hong Jun for the life of me. Like he just never showed up in that year and a half time. So I was like, what am I going to do? I can't be missing a Hong Jun. And then forever, we have but... the couple of sets yeah. that so, I just there's that my top three for. I think it's so cute. Again, I'm feeling so nostalgic for P3 collecting. I really am. I need to not, but I really am. I do love how cohesive these backs are, though. That's nice. But yeah, okay. So that is all in my 80s fever era pop binder. Like I said in my last storing video, there is nothing else for me to put in this binder. So it has been officially archived. Um, so you really won't see this binder until I do another one of these big flip throughs, which I, I don't do super often. Like we're lucky if I do one a year, but yeah. All right, so we have made it to the end. This is my last ATs binder and also my last photo card binder I have in general. So um, somebody also asked me how many binders do yes, I have? Yes, I have 22 I have binders. 22? Only 21 are in this video though because one binder is for Psychers, which doesn't have any photo cards in it yet because I haven't stored them yet. So technically 22 binders but only 21 that have photo cards in it. So that's how many binders I have so far until I need to split stuff again, which will be soon. <laughs> but this has all of Movement Pobs forward. So this is Myrna. We all know and love Myrna. <laughs> ah, so cute. So yeah, this house is... Um, all of the current era and future era pre-order cards that I will be working on. This is one of my absolute favorite sets. Like absolute. It's in holity style. It is dark concept. It is hollow. I love it. There's an identical set <laughs> that I collected from Megstar. I love that set too. It really is identical though. Did I already pass it? I don't remember. Did I? Let me look. Hold on. No, I didn't. That's somewhere. Ooh, but these KQ shop ones also real cute. Oh yeah, here it is. So this one's like identical, but I like the With Moo set a little bit more. I should have put them next to each other, but I haven't rearranged this binder yet. So this is the With Moo set, and then this is the Make Star set. So you can see them back to back. But yeah. Oh, the cute cafe cards. They really just got so good at pops in this era. They really did the Uno you know set where they all pose like Uno. You know. Super cute. These ones. <laughs> I, somebody also asked me like, what's my favorite OT8 set? It's definitely one of these because they, they stepped up their game hardcore in, in movement era. Like, look at that. Oh, and they did a lot more filter cards as well. Things are so cohesive. They're wearing jammies. Like, really just top tier things. Winking babies, which I love. All of Young, randomly. And then these are from Witness, which I am still working on. So that's why there's a lot of blank spaces. These sunglasses card just... Top tier, honestly. This was a top tier era of AT's pre-order benefits. Oh, okay. So I think my favorite set is either this or this. I think I got to go with the bears, though, simply because I own these bears and they're from Target. So like cute bears, cohesive sets and Target. Like, <laughs> it's a trifecta. 
So I am going to declare this set of cards my official favorite OG8 set that I own. Because, like, how cute is this? The diamonds? I just love everything about this set. No flaws. Beautiful, perfect, amazing Spider-Man 2. Like, look at the backs. Even the backs are even thought about. Like, I love absolutely everything about these cards. I think they are absolutely perfect. Like, they're they're perfect. I wouldn't change a thing about them. But I really, really love these funny Make Star cards, too. Especially the pink set. But yeah, with that, that is every single photo card I own. I was not counting this as I was filming. So I honestly don't know. Let me end on my favorite set. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's go back. That way we can have a cute outro. Look at the back of these. This is just cute. This is just cute. <laughs> yeah, I think I answered all of the questions. Um, I didn't really do too much from the collector tag just because I answered, I think, the whole thing in my first all binder flip through. Well, that has like a little bit more of that stuff. These are just more stories about how I collected things and answering you guys' personal questions to me. So I hope you enjoyed it. I know this video is going to be super duper long. <laughs> um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Nonetheless, I had a lot of people ask me for it. so. That's why, that's why we are here today. But yeah, so the total amount of cards is this. Yay! I bet it's a lot. I bet it's a lot. I'm going to guess. Mm, 4,117. <laughs> that's, that's my guess. I don't actually know. That could be super duper off, but that's my guess. Um, but yes, thank you all for watching this video and staying to the end if you did. And thank you so much for just coming to my channel and interacting with me, interacting with me on Instagram. I love you all so, so, so much. It's two in the morning. And until the next time ATs releases an absolutely perfect set,